بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب الشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقى قول أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah my brothers and my sisters in Islam I thank Allah Azza wa Jal for this noble opportunity, for this time, for this opportunity that he gives us to be in his house, to be from his guests, to be from amongst those who attend a gathering of knowledge. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Man yuridillahu bihi khayran yifaqihu fi ad-deen, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for, Allah Azza wa Jal will increase their knowledge in Islam. That moment that Allah Azza wa Jal puts you in a position to seek knowledge, that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you in a gathering, the gathering of knowledge, is that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give you goodness. Is that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bless you with goodness. And this gathering that we are in here now, this blessed gathering in the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants goodness for each one of us. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal puts us in an environment like this environment. To be from amongst those who achieve and attain goodness. To be from amongst those who acquire goodness. And what more goodness do you want than the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon you? Seeking knowledge, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, is a noble ritual. Seeking knowledge is a noble action. Seeking knowledge is a form and a way and a path that gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever takes a path of knowledge, Allah Azza wa Jal will make an easy path for them to enter the paradise. Whoever seeks knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an easy path for them to enter the Jannah. Those who sought knowledge are those that Allah Azza wa Jal will give them the paradise in return. But my brothers and my sisters, not only that we want to seek knowledge and not only that we want to know, we want to know and understand and act upon this knowledge that we seek. We want to act upon it. Not only that we want to know, we want to know, understand and act upon this knowledge. And for that, my brothers and my sisters, even though the last few Mondays we've been talking about stories from the Quran Kareem, beautiful stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and relates to us in the Quran Kareem, even though we are listening to stories, but there's nothing that stops us from living those stories. And the aim of these lessons, the aim of these stories, that we want to know those stories, understand them and live them in our lives. We want to reflect upon those stories. We want to reflect upon the lessons that we learn from those stories. We want to reflect upon the lessons that we acquire and conclude out of those stories so we could live them. For that reason, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions a lot of stories in the Quran Kareem, so we could reflect upon those stories and live those stories in our life. Live those stories in our life. There are a lot of profound lessons in those stories that we could live them in our time. We could live them in our day and age. We could live them in our current time. We could live them and have them and learn from them. And Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions their stories for us to understand them, for us to acknowledge their stories and at the same time to live their stories if there are particular lessons that we could reflect upon for us to live them in our day and age. And tonight, inshallah, we want to talk about a man, the Allah Azza wa Jal, not only that he mentioned the Quran Kareem, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named a full surah after his name, and that's Surah Luqman, and the man that we want to talk about is Luqman al-Hakim. Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman al-Hakim, he is not a prophet, he is not a messenger. But he is a righteous, upright, pious man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran Kareem. And not only that, as I mentioned, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored his mentioning. Allah Azza wa Jal honored this righteous man that Allah named an entire surah after his name. Allah named an entire surah after his name. A surah that will continue to recite to the day of judgment and that surah Luqman. Luqman, once again, he wasn't a prophet, he wasn't a messenger. He was a righteous, pious man. A righteous, pious man. But there's something different about Luqman 
than the rest of the righteous and pious people. Because Alhamdulillah, in our day and age, nowadays, and in the past, in the future, there will continue to be righteous and pious people. And there are a lot of righteous and pious people out there, maybe amongst us in this gathering, or one of the brothers and sisters who is listening to us, is righteous and pious in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. And obviously, when someone is righteous, when someone is pious, he does not come out and say, I am a righteous man. I'm a pious man. That's not the quality. That's not the attribute of a righteous and a pious man. A righteous and a pious man does not declare his righteousness and piety and say that he is a wali. But a righteous and a pious person always considers himself that no matter what he does or she does, there's always shortcomings. There's always more to do. Now Luqman al-Hakim, he's a righteous man. He's a pious man. He's an upright person. However, what's different from this righteous man to the other rich righteous man is that Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman al-Hakim, he was righteous, pious, upright, and wise. He was wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him in the Quran al-Kareem because of his wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made mention of him in the Quran al-Kareem because of his wisdom. As I mentioned, that there are a lot of righteous people now in the past and in the future. But what makes this righteous man different than the other righteous men and women? That this righteous man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon him wisdom, hikmah. Hikmah and forbearance. Hikmah and forbearance. What's hikmah is wisdom. What's wisdom is understanding things the way they should be understood. I'll say that again. Understanding things the way they should be understood. Because not necessarily that if I understand things, it's the way that they should be understood. I could understand things in one way, but my understanding of this thing could be incorrect, inaccurate. It's not necessary just because I understood it, it means I understood the right thing. And that's where we have a lot of clashes and conflicts because a lot of people see things, perceive things, and they think they understand them, but they don't really understand it. Even when it comes to the religion, how many people claim understanding of Islam, but the truth is that these people don't even have proper understanding of Islam. Their actions don't show and perceive proper understanding of Islam. Their actions don't portray a proper acknowledgement of Islam. But hikmah is when you understand things the way they should be understood. When you look at things and you understand them the way they should be looked at and the way they should be understood. This is Luqman al-Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of Luqman al-Hakim in the Quran al-Kareem and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ in many verses when Luqman said to his son, and before that Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنْ إِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We had bestowed upon Luqman, we had bestowed upon Luqman the wisdom. We had given and granted Luqman hikmah. We had given Luqman the hikmah, we had given Luqman the wisdom, أَنْ إِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ And then we commanded him to thank Allah Azza wa Jalla. To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting him wisdom. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنْ إِشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We had granted Luqman the hikmah, the wisdom. We had given Luqman the hikmah and wisdom. And we told Luqman to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be thankful and grateful to Allah. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ And whoever thanks Allah is only thanking Allah Azza wa Jal for the benefit of himself. When you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you benefit yourself. When you thank Allah Azza wa Jal, you bring goodness to yourself. When you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the one that's benefiting. The thanking of Allah Azza wa Jal, being thankful to Allah, grateful to Allah, you as a person will gain. You as a person will benefit. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that when you thank him, Allah azza wa jal will increase from his na'am upon you. وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ أَوْ لَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ When you thank me, I'll give you more, I'll increase more from my bounty upon you. So when you thank Allah azza wa jal, you are the one that benefits. You are the best beneficiary. You are the best person 
and you are the most person that will benefit out of the thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةَ أَنِسْكُرْ لِلَّهِ When we had granted Luqman the wisdom, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Thank Allah azza wa jal. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is implying the importance of thanking Allah for everything that Allah had given you. And the greatest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you is Islam. Islam is by far a lot more greater than wisdom because with wisdom, with wisdom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you proper understanding. But when you have Islam, you'll have wisdom. When you have Islam, you have wisdom. It's not necessarily that if you have wisdom, you have Islam because there are a lot of wise people out there and there are non-Muslims. But when you have Islam, you have wisdom. Not necessarily that if you have wisdom, you have Islam. And for that Allah Azza wa Jal, He commands Luqman, He commands Luqman al-Hakim to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the wisdom that Allah had granted him. And iskur lillah, wa man yaskur fa inna ma yaskur nafsih. And whoever thanks is only thanking in return to himself. When you thank Allah Azza wa Jal, you are bringing benefit to yourself. When you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the one that's succeeding. When you thank Allah Azza wa Jal, you are the one that's achieving. And whoever disbelieves, whoever negates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty upon them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wealthiest and Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that's worthy to be praised. So Allah does not need your thanking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your thankfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your ibadah. Allah does not need your thanking. Allah does not need your praising. Allah does not need your salah. Allah does not need your siyam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything from you. You are the one that needs Allah. You are the one that needs to thank Allah. You are the one that needs to praise Allah. You are the one that needs to worship Allah. You are the one that needs to pray to Allah. You are the one that needs to fast to Allah. You are the one that needs to donate and give for the sake of Allah. وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ Then Allah Azza wa Jal, He speaks about that moment that Luqman alayhi salam or Luqman al-Hakim tells and gives an advice to his young son and he says to him, O oh my son, do not ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, ascribing partners to Allah azza wa jal is extreme injustice. Is great and extreme injustice. Now, Luqman al-Hakim, as I mentioned, he's a wise man. He is not a prophet, he is not a messenger. He's a righteous, pious, upright, wise man that Allah Azza wa Jal blessed with Islam, blessed with piety, blessed with righteousness, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also blessed with wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with wisdom. And the scholars say, and the information that I'm giving you, there's nothing 100% authentic about it, but I am narrating to you what the scholars say about Luqman al-Hakim. And they say that Luqman, he was born during the time of Dawood alayhi salam. He was born during the time of Dawood alayhi salam. And he also lived during the time of the reign of Sulaiman, the son of Dawood alayhi salam. So Luqman goes as, as far as Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood alayhi salam came after Ibrahim and Musa and Harun and before Isa alayhi salam. So the scholars say Luqman al-Hakim, the wise Luqman, lived during the time of Dawood and he also learned from Dawood alayhi salam. He sought knowledge from Dawood alayhi salam and lived during the time of Sulaiman. Some scholars say not only that he lived during the time of Sulaiman, but he lived all the way to the time of Yunus alayhi salam. These are some of the narrations of the scholars. And they say that Luqman al-Hakim was born in the southern part of Egypt, in Bilad al Noba. He was born in the southern part of Egypt. And then, as I mentioned, during the time and the kingdom of Dawood alayhi salam, he moved towards Palestine and he sought knowledge from Dawood, then from Sulaiman, and he was a wise man that people will resort to and seek knowledge from. People will go and take an advice from. So the main thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised Luqman al-Hakim on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him on that he was a wise man. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him in that he is a wise man, a man with a law of wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that moment of wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of the wisdom and the wise advices that Luqman al-Hakim had given and he gave to his son. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ When Luqman told his son, O oh my son, do not ascribe partners to Allah Azza wa Jal. Do not associate partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, indeed, associating partners with Allah is a severe injustice. It's severe oppression. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him this verse, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِذُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal is speaking about those who believed and did not mix their belief with injustice and oppression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those who will enter the paradise, those who believe and never mix their iman, never mix their belief and faith with injustice and oppression. Now when this verse was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hearing that verse and taking it at face value, and you understand that verse from the outside, you start contemplating and thinking and you say to yourself, who does not mix their iman with wrong? Who does not mix their iman with injustice and oppression? Every single one of us, no matter how righteous we are, how pious we are, how upright we are, at the end we do wrong things. If we are not unjust to others, we could be unjust to our wives. We could be unjust to our children. We could be unjust to the close ones. You know what? We could be unjust to the animals. And that's why the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they were so concerned when they heard that verse being recited by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which has been recently revealed to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam, Allah is speaking about the people of the paradise are those who believe and do not mix their belief with injustice. They came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we just heard a verse that's been recently revealed to you and we find that verse to be so harsh on us because every single one of us mixes the iman with injustice. Every single one of us had fallen into injustice in one way or another. Now, if because we believe in Allah and we do good and we had committed or we've been involved or engaged or indulged in any form of injustice, Allah Azza wa Jalla will never admit us into the paradise. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, you misunderstood this verse. You misunderstood this verse. Didn't you hear what Luqman said to his son when he gave him this advice? Ya bunaya la tushrik billah. Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. Oh my son, do not ascribe partners to Allah. Indeed, associating and ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great and severe injustice. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is implying when he says those who believe and do not mix their iman with injustice, Allah is implying and referring to, to those who do not mix their iman with associating partners to Allah, with shirk. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention in this surah, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتُهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَوَانٌ وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنٌ then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of looking after your parents, the rights of your parents upon you. Allah Azza wa Jal continues to mention how important it is for you to look after your parents, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we encourage and command every single human being to look after his parents. His mother had given birth to him after she had endured hardship of a hardship. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطَحْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And then if your parents ever force you or impose upon you to ascribe partners to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says, then obey them. Then listen to them, but in return, be friendly to them. In return, be dutiful towards them. Even though your parents are encouraging you, not only to commit haram, but to commit the worst of haram. Not only they are, committing, they are commanding you, or they are encouraging you to do something wrong or haram, but they are commanding you to ascribe partners to Allah, which is the worst of all evil actions. The worst of all evil actions. Allah says to you, then listen to them, then obey them, but be respectful towards them. 
Be dutiful towards them. Be friendly towards them. This is how important it is in Islam for you to obey your parents and be respectful towards them. Your obedience to your parents does not only stop at that if they are early Muslims, no. Your obedience to your parents must continue and you must be obedient and dutiful and respectful to your parents even though they are non-Muslims. But if they command you to do something haram, you don't follow them, you don't obey them. You don't listen to them, but you be friendly towards them, you are dutiful towards them. And Allah Azza wa says, and follow the path of those who had repented to me. And then in return, every single one of you shall return back to me. And Allah Azza wa says, and then I'll tell you, I'll inform you of all the deeds that you used to do. we all, and we shall all return back to Allah Azza wa Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues in this surah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention the different advices that Luqman al-Hakim gave to his son. And then he says, Ya Bunayya, innaha in taku mithqala habbatin min khardalin, fatakun fi sakhratin, aw fi samawati, aw fi al-ardi, yati biha Allah, inna Allah latifun khabir. Oh my son, now it's Luqman al-Hakim giving an advice to his son. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants us to listen to this advice so we could also learn from this advice. We could benefit out of this advice. Oh son, if there, if there could be, if there could be a weight of a mustard seed inside a rock, anywhere, anywhere on the surface of this earth or in the heavens. So now Luqman wants to draw and paint a picture to his son. Oh my son, imagine if there is a weight of an atom seed or a weight of a mustard seed. A weight of a mustard seed. And that mustard seed was in a rock on the surface of this earth or in the heavens. Now for a fact that Allah Azza wa Jal knows where it is. And now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see it. And now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can get it. In other words, Allah Azza wa Jal can see you. Wherever you are, at whatever place you are in or at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. Don't think you could hide away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think you could conceal yourself away from Allah azza wa jal. Wherever you are, no matter what place you are at, Allah can see you. Allah knows of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can get you. Allah can see you. Allah knows of you and Allah can get you. You can't run away from Allah. Ya bunayya, innaha in taku mithqala habbatin min khardalin fatakun fi sakhra aw fi samawat Oh my son, if there was to be a weight of a mustard seed in a rock on earth in the heavens, Allah will bring it. Allah knows of it. And this is an advice that Allah wants us to learn of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn this advice from Luqman al Hakim, even though Luqman is saying it to his son, for us to understand, for us to acknowledge, for us to believe that Allah can see us. Allah knows what we do. Allah knows what we say. Allah knows every action that we take. Allah can see us. Allah can watch us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of everything that we do. This is the advice that Luqman gave. And Luqman al-Hakim, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, some of the scholars say he was a slave. He was a slave. A slave that he was working for his master. So Luqman al-Hakim again, he wasn't a prophet, he wasn't a messenger, he was a righteous, pious man with a law of wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him and bestowed upon him. Allah blessed him with a law of wisdom. And his wisdom continued to be a legacy that people will continue to learn from and grasp from to the day of judgment that Allah mentions in the Quran al-Kareem. And his master used to look down at him. His master used to mistreat him. But then when he found out about his wisdom and he found out about his forbearance and his understanding, his master became so close to him. Then at the end, he freed him and he became a free man. And amongst the events that took place between Luqman and his master, that one day the master of, a Luk um, the master of Luqman, he gave him a sheep and he told him to go and slaughter this sheep. And after he slaughters the sheep to bring the best part of him. So Luqman al-Hakim took that sheep, he slaughtered the sheep, and then he brought to his master the tongue and the heart. Then the following day his master gave him another sheep, and he told him to take it, and to slaughter it, and to bring the worst part of it. So Luqman al-Hakim went, 
He slaughtered the sheep and then he brought back to his master the tongue and the heart. So his master was amazed and he said to him, I asked you the first day to slaughter the sheep and to bring me the best part of them. So you got me, or the best part of it, and you got me the heart and the tongue. The following day I asked you to slaughter the sheep and to get me the worst part of it, and you got me the heart and the tongue. Please explain. How do you reconcile the two? So Luqman al-Hakim responded and he said, How beautiful the tongue and the heart can be, and how bad and evil the heart and the tongue can be. The heart and the tongue are the most beautiful parts in you, and the heart and the tongue can be the worst parts in you. It's with this heart and this tongue that you could win people over, with this heart and this tongue that you could turn people away from you. With this heart and this tongue, you could turn your enemy to become your lover, and with this heart and this tongue, you could turn your lover to become your enemy. How beautiful the heart and the tongue can be when they are good, and how evil the heart and the tongue can be when they are evil and bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, and Allah continues with the advice that Luqman al-Hakim is giving to his son after he mentioned and after he advised his son the importance of always knowing that Allah is watching you. The importance of always knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Sami', is the Basir, the all hearer, the all knower, the all watcher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see everything, Allah can hear everything, and Allah knows of everything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya Bunaya, aqim is salah. Now that's the second advice. After he gave the first advice was, his first advice was not to ascribe any partners to Allah. The second advice then was not to, or to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see everything and Allah Azza wa Jal is watchful of everything. Then the third advice, not the second, but the third advice is now where he says to him, Oh my son, establish the prayers. Aqim as salah. He did not say to him, pray. He said, establish prayers in your life. And there's difference. There's big difference between when you pray and when you establish prayers in your life. When you pray, you pray because you have to pray and you pray because you feel like it's an obligation upon you to pray. So you pray just to bypass it. Or you pray just for the sake of lifting that responsibility of your shoulder. But when you establish the prayers, you live the prayers even though you're outside the prayers. When you establish the prayers, you live outside the prayers as if you are praying. Because what's the main purpose of praying? That you become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You become observant of Allah Azza wa Jal. You become mindful of Allah. And that's why when you pray, you rarely think of the haram. When you say Allahu Akbar and you read the Fatiha and you make ruku and you make sujood, during that process, the only thing that's in your mind or the only thing that you try to have in your mind is that you are standing before Allah. So you only want to think right. You want to think righteous. You don't think of the haram. And the moment you think of the haram while you are praying, you start trying to ignore it. You try and evade it. You try and avoid it. When you are praying, you try and connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though most of us and the vast majority of times, we're not even devoting in our prayers. We're not even concentrating in our prayers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to establish the prayers. So when you're outside the prayers, you are like as if you are in the prayers. You are observant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are conscious of Allah azza wa jal outside the prayers as if you are praying. That's why establishing the prayers in your life. The prayer is not about the three or four minutes that you put to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you make those movements. The prayer is about making a change in your life. And for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, in the salata, tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Indeed, the prayer prevents you from evilness and prevents you from wrongdoings. If I am continuing to pray and I'm praying and I'm not keeping myself from the haram, is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ, he said to someone, if your prayer does not stop you and prevent you from the haram, then there's no prayers for you. You're not even praying. For that, Luqman al-Hakim, he tells to his son <coughs> and advises his son, Aqim is salah, establish prayers. Establish prayers in your life. Live your entire life as if you are praying every single moment of your life. Live outside the salah as if you are in the salah. Aqim is salah. 
وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر and then he follows the call for which is good and prevent from which is bad enjoin people to goodness and prevent people from badness invite people to goodness and tell people to keep away from the haram because this is the character of those who establish the prayers in the prayers you only think of the matter of goodness and you don't think of the haram you don't think of the munkar evilness and that's how your character and your life must be outside the prayer someone who's always upholding goodness and someone who's always against and fighting evilness someone who's always following goodness and someone who's always avoiding evilness يا بني أقم الصلاة وأمر بالمعروف وانهى عن المنكر واصبر على ما أصابك and have patience have patience over what you endure have patience over what you face have patience over what you encounter have patience over what you experience in life there are so many things in life there are so many times and so many moments and events in life that we need to have patience not always throughout life and over the course of time that we continue to experience goodness in our life sometimes we experience goodness and sometimes we experience evilness sometimes we experience good things and sometimes we experience bad things sometimes we experience happy things and sometimes we experience sad things i just came from a very close brother who just lost his father that's a sad moment allah is saying have patience over what you experience have patience over what you endure have patience over what you encounter. Whatever you face, whatever you experience, whatever you encounter, have patience. If something goodness comes to you, thank Allah for it. If something evil or sad comes to you, have patience. This is life. But there's something else that Allah Azza wa Jal is alluding to in this verse. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to tell us those that are upright, those who are righteous, those who establish prayers, those who are called for good, those who prevent from bad, will always experience hardships in their life. Those who establish the prayers, call for which is good, prevent from which is bad, they shall experience hardship in their life. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكْ إِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Indeed, these are from the most determined matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the most determined matters when it comes to Allah azza wa jal. Then he says, وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَةً And he's given now another advice to his son, saying to his son, O oh son, don't turn your cheek, don't turn your face to people. What does that allude to? What does that imply to? This is implying to pride. When people have pride, and people with pride, when they talk to you, they don't face you face to face. They are too good for you, for you to look at their face, and for them to look at you. And that's why they look, they look at you from the side of their face. Or as they say, his nose is up. He has a high nose. Doesn't want to talk to you, doesn't want to face you. Now the advice that Luqman is giving to his son, don't turn your face to people when you speak to people. In other words, don't have pride over people. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه بثقال ذرة من كبر. Whoever has an atom white of pride will never enter the paradise. Will never enter the paradise. And Allah azza wa jalla says in the hadith al-Qudsi that pride is my cloak and greatness is my rope. And whoever wants to compete with me or contest with me, Abraham, I'll throw him in the hellfire. Pride is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the only one that has right to have pride because he is the master and everyone else is the servant of his. He is the creator and everyone else is the creation. Everyone resorts to him and he does not resort to anyone. Don't turn your cheek. Don't turn your face to people. Don't speak to people with pride. And don't walk on earth with pride. Don't be too happy. Don't think you are untouchable. You know that mentality that some of us have? They think just because they've got some leverage or some influence or some prestige or wealth, they think that they're untouchables. No one can touch them. No one can go near them. Even some of them have the pride. They think they will never even die. 
that walk on earth with pride. Don't think you are above anyone. You might think that you are more superior than everyone, but in the sight of Allah, you are the worst one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhur. Allah azza wa jal does not love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love anyone with pride. Anyone that thinks or they believe that ever anyone. Allah does not love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes those with pride. Those that they think that are more superior than anyone else. Waqsid fi mashik. When you walk, walk gently. When you walk, walk gently. Waqdud means sautik. And when you speak, don't speak with a high voice. Lower your voice. Be moderate and balanced when you speak and when you walk. Inna ankar al aswati la sautu al hamir. Those who have or those who try and put their voices too loud when they speak to people one on one, those that they want to put it over people by them screaming and shouting. And you know the attitude to try and intimidate someone. You scream at them, you shout at them. He says, Inna ankar al aswati la sautu al hamir. These are the voices of donkeys. These are the voices of donkeys. This is the action and the attitude of a donkey that wants to intimidate others, not because they have anything beside they've got a high voice. They've got a loud voice. They scream and they shout when they talk to you. They want to put it over you. They want to intimidate you with their voice. They want to intimidate you with their deep voice. Some people believe that just because they are loud, as they say, the loudest baby always gets the milk. Because they're loud. The loudest person thinks that because they are loud and they've got a loud voice, they could put it over everyone. Waqdud means sautik. Lower your voice when you speak to people. Respect people. It's disrespectful when you speak to people with a loud voice. Especially when you're talking one on one. We're not talking about he lectures. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to be loud when he used to speak. As the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum described him when he used to speak on a mimbar or when he used to deliver a sermon, he used to be loud. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face would turn red. And they used to even see his veins on his neck popping out as if he is warning the Sahaba from an enemy that's coming nearby. That's in a lecture, that's different. But when you speak to people, when you are dialoguing with people, when you are talking to people when you are interacting with people it's not nice that you put your voice so loud that you're trying to intimidate people that's not the quality of the mu'min the mu'min is balanced the mu'mina is balanced they are balanced wherever they go and the aim of this verse is to be balanced in your actions to be balanced in your voice to be balanced in your speech to be balanced in your walk to be balanced in your actions to be balanced in your talk Balance, moderation. Moderation in all actions, in all aspects is always noble. It's the nobility of an action that you are moderate in your actions, you are moderate in your dealings, you are moderate in your speech, you are moderate in the way you deal with others. And from amongst the advice of Luqman al-Hakim that he gave his son, he said to him, Ya Bunay, la takun, la takun hulwan fatubla' wa la murran fatulfad. He says, oh my son, don't be so sweet or people will swallow you. And don't be so sour, people will spit you out. Don't be so sweet, people will swallow you. Don't be so sour, people will spit you out. Be balanced. Don't give too much and don't take too much. Exactly what Allah Azza wa Jal tells the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً فِي عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا محسورة. Oh Muhammad, don't be too tight and don't be too generous. Don't grab your hands or don't grab your neck with your hand and then leave your hand too open. Have that balance. Give and take. Take and give. Don't be too, 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 too friendly and don't be too, too, too aggressive. Be in the middle. Because if you are too friendly, people will start disrespecting you. And if you are too aggressive, people will not even respect you. People fear you. There's got to be that moderation. 
There's got to be the moderation our dealings. There's got to be that balance. There's got to be that balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be at where Allah azza wa jal praises this ummah. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And therefore, we made you a moderate, balanced nation. Allah praised this ummah because of its moderation. Allah balanced this, Allah azza wa jal praised this ummah because this ummah is so balanced. It's so balanced in everything, even in the sharia. In the legislations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had legislated upon us. In the rules and the laws of the sharia. Ah, the sharia ah is so balanced, so moderate. In our understanding of the deen. In how we grasp and how we understand the religion. That's all balanced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that we are balanced. From amongst the wise sayings of Luqman al-Hakim, he says, Ya bunai, urju allaha raja'an. لا تأمن فيه مكره وخاف وخاف الله مخافة لا تيأس بها رحمته. He says, Oh my son, Oh my son, have hope in Allah subhanahu wa taala with the fear that Allah would not accept from you. And also, also fear Allah subhanahu wa taala with the hope that Allah azza wa jalla will forgive you. Balance, and that's the beauty of Luqman al Hakim. He was very balanced. And his words of wisdom always allude to and employ, imply to his wisdom and his balance. Always imply to how wise he is in his understanding and how wise he is in the way he dealt with people. Some of the scholars say that Luqman al-Hakim passed away and he was buried in Palestine. He was buried in Beit Lahim, Bethlehem. And other scholars say he was buried in Yemen. And other scholars say he was buried in Egypt. There's nothing concrete about this. This is Luqman al-Hakim, a man with a lot of wisdom, full of wisdom, a man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised for his wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised for his righteousness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised for his piety. A man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named the full surah after him. A man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take as a role model. And obviously the greatest role model for us is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah to make us from amongst those who listen and hear. Act upon what they listen and hear. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Inshallah my brothers and sisters I just do remind you again that every Thursday night after Salat al-Isha starting from this Thursday after Daylight Saving we're starting the lessons at Tayyum Maysena every Thursday night after Salat al-Isha and we've been going through the book of Riyad al-Salihin which is a book full of tarbiyah and a lot of good wise words from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inshallah I'll see you Thursdays bi-idhnillah Subhanakallah Muhammad